Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Harrison Young for Topic Time. Uh, I got some underwriters for the show. We're going to read the names, and then we'll start the show as usual. We have MDI Auto Brokers and Repair in Whitman. We have Angel Nails and Skin Care in East Bridgewater. We have Auto Country in Abington, King of the Used Car. We have Furnace Brook Motors in Easton, high quality, affordable cars for sale. We have Vape Solutions in East Bridgewater. We have Reclaimed Market in East Bridgewater. We have Bridgewater Liquors and Lottery Tickets at a discount price in Bridgewater. We have Town Line General Store in West Bridgewater where UPS access is always available. We have Baron and, the Baron and Fig Salon in Bridgewater. And we have Ye Old Standish Grill in East Bridgewater. And that's it. Thank you all very much. And now we will start the show. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the September 17th edition of Topic Time with Harrison Young. It's a beautiful afternoon out there. You, you kind of sense an Indian summer coming on, even though it's still real summer. But this is actually the best time of year. You know, it's not too hot. It's not too cold. Um, but in here, it's always hot. We're always getting an amazingly new and amazing, incredibly uh, upbeat guest, and we sure have one today. This young lady here, this is Ali Mariotto. Mali, what, how do you say your last name? Mar Mar did I, did I get it right? Mariotto. Mariotto, okay. <laughs> sounds, looks and sounds very uh, romantic, European, Italian, all that. Rolled mm -hmm. into one. And she's an actress. And she's, she just told me she's part of a film company called, what is it, Murder Mystery? Uh, and it's just a Murder Mystery. Just Murder Mystery, and it's a national company. And she's got a really good career going. And it looks to me like she might model too. We're going to cover that as well. <laughs> she, has that, she has that look about it. She has a great smile. She has a great disposition, and I'm so glad we got her on the show today. So, Ali, Mariaro, Mariot, Mariaro, sorry about that. <laughs> like my a bad. Twister. We'll get it done, get it right before the show ends. Thank you for being on my show topic time today. Thank you for having me, Harrison. Okay. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's talk about uh, your history. In that you're an actress, right? Yep. First and foremost. Exactly. I was bitten by the bug back in fifth grade um, during a performance of Oliver. Okay. That my fifth grade class. Where did you play in Oliver? It's, I was his aunt, actually, um, Aunt Rose. I okay. wanted the part of Nancy, which is the lead girl in it. I understand. Um, That's one of those Charles Dickens plays, right? Exactly. Okay. Fine, okay, this was fifth grade. So for you, I assume that wasn't too long ago. You don't look that old. <laughs> no, no, I'm uh, 30. Wow. So no, I would not I would have said maybe 20, 21 or two at the most. That's, oh, thank you. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess that those you're still space creams are Compared to me, working. I'm still quite young. But uh, that's, that's incredible. Okay, so you, where did you grow up and how did and you, and you, and what took you so long? To, what took you ten, your first 10 years of your life to decide? Somebody just, that, that you wanted to be into acting. You just uh, did your first few years at, in elementary school and then by the time you were 10 that's when the acting bug hit you because you decided to play the aunt and Oliver correct you know I think that we weren't really given an option the whole class had to be in this performance well, I always say everything happens for a reason exactly okay. so I uh, I think that the music director our musical teacher was in charge of it and I really enjoyed it and then all throughout high school I enjoyed doing the plays okay. and I grew up in Hopkinton Massachusetts great town yeah, right yeah. that's where they start the marathon every year yep that is our claim to fame um, for one day a year we are the center of it all just just real quick question after you know on that no you look very fit did you ever run the marathon yourself uh, you know, I actually have thought about training. I have some friends who are trying to run a marathon in every single state. So wow. they are serious. But I've heard that if you can run around, I think, five to six miles, you would be able to run 26. But you could. You have to make sure that you, you just have to kind of like slowly build your, your intensity up day by day for, the, like for a couple of months. 
a truth, a little truth about my the marathon and how it, how, you, how it affects me. Now, in 1995, I decided that I was going to run it in 50 years. Now that that's almost halfway there. We're almost halfway. Not run it. I'm. I decided then I was going to participate. I thought run then. Now the way I figure it, in the year 2045, in that spring, I'll be 85 and a half, and I'm not going to. And I'll, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to run it. I'm going to walk it, but I'm going to finish it. If I'm still alive and my legs still work, I'm going to I'm going to make it happen. Well, maybe we can do it together. Yeah, that's right. I'll be 85. You'll be you'll be like six. You'll be 50. You'll be about this, a little younger <laughs> than I am now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I I used to go every year when I lived in town. I would sleep over at one of my friends' uh, places who lived in the center of town. And Where, in the town we center of Hopkinton. In the center of Hopkinton, because okay. they closed down the roads. I know that. So except for running. The runners. Exactly. Right. And we lived on the Hawkinton Upton border. So I would sleep over at my friend's house and we would go in the morning and we would stand and cheer the runners, the runners on, on and give yeah. them high fives as they were yeah, I figured you, starting yeah, I figured out. You, 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 like cheering, you like cheering people on. I get that. You like being cheered and you like cheering. Well, yep. That's interesting. Now, I think when I think of Hawkinton, I, I think of the town line of Ashland more than Upton. I guess you, you were further, this is further uh, south, correct? Than Ashland, where you are, right? It's were. exactly right. So it yeah, it's a area. very spread out town. So there's yeah. a lot of land there, and so it was easier for me to see my friends on my side of town. But I had plenty of friends who were right on the Ashland Hopkinton border, and so exactly right. Kind I of the other side of just, town. Just so you, I know the park. I, I know the park in, in the Hopkin, Hopkinton Ashland line. I go there. I used to go there a lot. <gasps> That's beautiful. It is. You know, my, and then I just and then I decided that. During the spring, when they let cars come, in. I even did a video there once, many, many years ago, a music video. I just, I just took a camcorder, shot some footage, and edited some music in. And I tried to sell it as a relaxation tape. Nobody bought it. This, <sighs> but this is my calling for now, anyway. But the thing about the thing about that town, that that park, is what I liked about it. it when I was walking there in the winter, they kept it, they kept the cordon off for traffic, so I didn't have to worry about cars running in and you know, maybe colliding with me and getting in my way. And then as soon as they opened the gate, I decided that this is it. I'm not coming back here until it's too cold to let traffic in. So, but I still always like the park. So again, speaking of at performances, now they have a really lovely common yes. in Hopkinton. Have you ever done any theater there? It's on the common? Yeah. No. On the gazebo there, I, you know what I'm talking about? It's, I know exactly yeah, where. Right. At the gazebo, you know, they have musical performances right. there. I think every Sunday night in the summer. Okay. They haven't had any theater there that I know of. I think that they do have theater outside near the new high school. Okay. Uh, I performed at just on the stage at the high school. I was part of a production that got it start in Hopkinton. Okay. And then it actually went on a international tour, which was really exciting. It was called- Did you go with them? I did. Where'd you go? What's, what countries? So the name of the project was Kultar's Mime. And one of the big incentives was there was um, in the audition notification, a uh, potential trip to India. Wow. And we ended up going with this production to India twice. Wow, that's so awesome. It was beautiful and it was really amazing. Yeah, cool. And so the director and his daughter lived in Hopkinton. Okay. I never knew them when I actually lived there, but the play got its start. She cast some of her friends, high school friends, and it was first performed in Hopkinton. Okay, what was the play? It was called uh, Quiltar's Mime. Okay. So it was, um, a mime, was, it, was it a mime play? Like, did you all dress up in white <laughs> paint and do this? <laughs> Not. Um, not quite that far, but there was a lot of movement. It yep. was very lyrical. So right. when we went to India, some of the places we went, they didn't speak English, but right. they were still able to get the gist of the play because there was so much movement. Right. It was mostly like 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 movement in, of improv, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. There was a lot of um, just miming or. Uh, you know, the mime use is of what, just mime our is bodies. Mime is like signing, but used for the deaf, but using your whole body. And yet it's not for the deaf. It's for people who don't know English or know the language that you're speaking. So that works great. It, it worked did. out good for you. It worked out amazing. It so I'm did. glad I asked these questions because it always, they always seems to bring up interesting t points like this. So this was high school. This was after you, you did your, you did your play Oliver in fifth grade. Yeah. You fell in love with, now is that, now that's a musical, right? Yes, so it was. So did you have to sing? It's, I did. Okay. There was singing. So how much, so let me ask you this, how, how incorporated is music into your acting life? Is it, or is it, I mean, or has it been since then? 
or not? Well, you know, I I still love to sing. Uh, oh, okay. I would say my forte these days, or, or what I seem to be doing mostly these days, are uh, short films and web series gotcha. and, and film. Uh, okay. But I, I love musicals, and where I use my voice the most these days is singing telegrams. Cool. So I didn't even know they did <laughs> telegrams anymore. Do you actually deliver them? I did. Do I you do, you, are you self-employed doing singing telegrams? I did one once in 1989. You did? For a guy that turned 60. Cool. I mean, I, oh, I'm poetic. I write poetry. I've written a couple of books. Of short, I wrote a book of short stories in the 90s. I wrote a book of poetry 30 years. When you were born, I don't know if you were born in 1988, I well, was. In 1978, I'm thinking back, 40 years, I wrote a book of poetry when I was 19. Whoa. It was a little pamphlet. I had it printed at Sir Speedy. What so, was it in the vein of? Was it oh, like Oh, it was Walt just a little Whitman humorous or? limerick, that kind of thing. People loved it. I even, I even sold out on consignment at the, one of the local bookstores in Brockton, where I live, which is just a couple of towns from here. So obviously, that was where the singing telegram was yesterday that I did. Oh, you in Brockton? Yeah, wow. I was right in Brockton. So do you write these singing telegrams and deliver them, or and then I mean, now you like you said, did you say you're self-employed for doing this? You do your own it's, singing telegram company? It's through a couple of different companies. I'm essentially an independent contractor. Okay. One of them is centered um, out in Denver, and then if he gets a singing telegram, he kind of coordinates with the people in the area. It's wow. In. And then one. Um, they're singing telegrams for Boston party adventures. Oh my goodness. How did you, how did you land this gig? So it's um, through uh, friends who are in the acting community. It's okay. a great job for it actors sure because we love to perform. And so yeah, you're I, essentially I getting paid to perform. I, would I, I gotta tell you something. I mean, my birthday's coming up in a couple of weeks. I'd love to see you at my door singing happy birthday with you know, some kind of really twisted lyric. <laughs> not, you know, not just a regular happy birthday. Anyone can do that. But somebody with a good imagination could think of something really crazy to sing, which would be fine. Well, there's some popular ones. Marilyn Monroe. You can Monroe. hit me in the face with a pie. That's what <laughs> I used to. I used to actually don a chicken suit and hit people in the face with a pie and give them balloons. The if singing chicken. was a guy, chicken. I hit him in the face with a pie. If it was a girl, I'd give him balloons. The singing chicken's one of the most popular right. singing telegrams and the pink gorilla. I know where, I know where it's at. I'm <laughs> in the loop. Okay. All right. Well, let's get, but we got to, we got to talk about your acting too. Okay. So you got it. You got the acting bug. What was your, how old were you when you did your first film? Uh, and what was it? And then let's let's figure out all the projects you've done, and we're going to possibly look at it, some of your demo reels too. We can yeah, definitely. The uh, up. So I I went to school actually um, at Boston University, uh, okay. grad school for film production. Okay. So one of the first films I was in was one of the projects that we did when I was in school, and so uh, we were all in each other's projects because it was easier to just recruit your other classmates. You went to Boston, you went to B Boston University instead of Emerson? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> yes, that's I know cool. that they have a bit of a um, rivalry they do. between each I never each knew other. that, but see, that's why I'm glad we asked these questions. Okay, so, you, but, but it must be, must have a pretty good program at BU for, for film and creating it's incredible. And, and acting and whatnot, right? It's it's amazing. One of the best things about it, I think Emerson does this as well. I don't yeah. know who started it first, but there's something called BU in LA. Okay. Where your Emerson last does semester. too. Yeah, they have an LA. I had a girl in here a few months ago who had, they told me she went out to LA to, to do it. You know, and she was an Emerson grad. Yes. And she told me that she went out to LA last summer and did you know did Emerson LA out there. So yeah, it's just, it, they have they, it's the same thing. You have BU out there and you have Emerson out there. Exactly. They wow. kind of have parallel programs, yep. and so I. I essentially got into film production because I thought, you know, being oh so clever, oh, if I get into film production, I can just bypass the entire audition um, uh, process itself because then I can just cast myself in all my own projects. There you go. <laughs> well, that makes so, sense. So that's Cut out the middle I, person, right? Exactly. So yeah. that's kind of what I was essentially doing. And then you don't doing. have to worry about being rejected because you'll make the decision. You can't reject yourself. Um, it, well, that's exactly right. So <laughs> I was just, I am going to, you know, because you do everything. You're kind of like the auteur when you're going to school because yeah. they want you to write the projects yourself and, and shoot the projects and direct the projects. And so then I just went one step further and cast myself. There you go. That is awesome. <laughs> so what did you, so what, tell me about what you cast yourself in at BU. So one of the projects that I uh, first did was called Letting Go. Okay. It was a short film. Yep. And it has this eerie vibe where who wrote it did you write it too? I, I did, did write it Woo! yeah nice. so so i wrote it yep. and i uh i play this girl who has um 
is essentially a ghost. I've suffered this tragic death, and so wow. I'm haunting my fiance, and he's moved on. He's found this other girl, and they have this really um, intense connection, but Ooh. I'm still kind of, you know, in limbo. Even, so even, even in death, you want him. Exactly. Oh, wow. That's so kinky. Kind of, I like it. <laughs> so he's appearing to me, and or I'm appearing to him, rather, yep. and I'm kind of, you know, holding on, and then the reason it's called letting go is because she kind of has to come to terms with going on to another realm and letting him live his life. Wow. That is so cool. How short is it? Like 15 minutes? Yeah, it's around the 10 minute mark, and okay. I actually shot it in Hopkinton. There you go. So, Hopkinton, um, it was great because my parents still had a house there at the time, yep. and so uh, they were very supportive and let me use the house. And uh, Hopkinton, it's become much more built up, but um, it, there's still beautiful woods well, all around. So, we, we Hopkinton, shot a lot Hopkinton in the Sweet. woods. Route 126 and Route 85 is a beautiful intersection. Wow. Where it leads is beautiful. It's a little busy there because of, you know, it's trafficy. But all those roads lead you to, I mean, route 80, you take Route 85 into Berlin, and, you know, Berlin. I don't want to say like, like <laughs> Berlin, Germany, but I know, I know you like the woods. So this was basically, you did a lot of outdoor shoots there. It was, it okay. was, it was, the majority of the shoot was outdoors. Okay. And it, thank goodness when we were shooting, it was nice, mild, but I've been on some shoots which were absolutely oh. frigid. Oh, I know. The coldest I've ever been has been on shoots. Outdoor stuff. But you know it's worth it when the project is finished. It is. Of course. It is. Well, you, okay. So how many projects do you think you've done, you know, all together? Can you ballpark it? Get an, you know, just an idea? Oh, uh, Something like you've oh, done a lot. A lot. It's, yeah. I, I would say at this point, um, within the Boston area, it would probably be around 40 wow. projects, I'd think. Because when I first moved back here, I was living out in Los Angeles. Right. Um, after I did the BU in LA program, I stayed out there. Okay. And then um, at, people say, you are want to be a performer. Why didn't you stay in LA? That's the perfect place to be an actress. And I say, well, it's a good place to be a, you know, you feel like you're a little fish in a big pond. Right. And in Boston, it's a good place to build up your credentials and to Couldn't kind ask of for a better answer resume. than that. You made, yeah, you, you, you told them you were <laughs> right. You were absolutely right. So, okay, so you've done about 40. So between like web series films and, and now you're singing telegrams. And tell me about just, just murder mystery. What's that? How'd you get into that? So well, you, are, you are so inundated with stuff. It's great. <laughs> I know we could be here um, until know, midnight. So so just murder mysteries. Um, they have all different kinds of shows. The most popular one is Bullets in the Bathtub, oh, and okay. that now this, these are all plays, right? Yep, this is all plays and uh, companies. Uh, I've done bachelorette parties. They hire the company. It's two people, okay. and you go in and. There's a murder that happens. You assign parts oh, to everyone okay. and there. And, then, and the people are supposed to figure out who done it? Yep, exactly. Oh, and then, I've heard of that. And that everyone's is. basically a suspect, and they have to figure out who committed the crime. Okay. Well, how do you actually put, perpetrate the murder? You don't use, like, fake blood? Or do you just, so or do you, or do you just basically tell a story and say so-and-so was murdered? This was, this was the, these were the circumstances. Who done it, correct? Usually the you know, murder victim comes out and there's this big dramatic, you know, death scene and then yep. they collapse and they say something kind of cryptic right before they die, okay. which has some kind of meaning. Yes. And, uh, but they don't usually die on stage because that's very difficult because yeah, then if, if they I'm, die on stage, I'm only I one never person. See who killed them. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But then they usually come in and they're staggering around. Okay. And so it's, you know, just happened. And then they stagger off and then they die off stage. So you don't have to lug them off or wow. carry them off. You ever do that on a cruise? I hear that they do these on cruise ships too sometimes. Yes. Did you ever? It's, I've never done one on a cruise ship. I think it would be so much fun. And one of my friends does um, a murder mystery. I think it's clue themed at, I think the... Um, Endicott House or one of the mansions. Okay. And Where I think that? that would be really fun Where's too. Where's the Endicott House? Um, I feel like it's in Dedham. Oh, okay. I, I, I think it's in the it's in the Boston area, west of Boston. Okay. I'd probably even buy it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the kind of place. It's kind of an upscale, a, a tour, you know, a little touristy yes. place to go and hang out. We've done it have at dinner um, and all that kind of thing. We did a murder mystery at Tupper Manor which is in the North Shore okay. area. And that was really beautiful, and that was a fun place to do one. Wow, murder mystery on the North Shore. What a, what a place <laughs> to do it. Yeah, okay. But 
the interesting thing is the way that I got involved with it is I used to work with Cambridge Historical Tours, which okay. is another great uh, job for an actor because right. you're in character as a historical figure. Right. And so one of my friends who started that company, um, Chris, he worked for Just Murder Mysteries and he was in a bind and he said, hey, my friend Allie, I bet that she can jump in and do um, Murder in Mayberry, which is another one of the shows like that Nancy kind of has a southern theme. Like Nancy Griffith. Exactly. Right, okay. And oh. so I jumped in and I really enjoyed it. And um, the first show I did with Just Murder Mysteries was in Ashland. Okay. And then just kind of stuck with them after that. Okay, I kind wow. of proved my stripes. So you're doing, so you're doing murder mysteries around the, around the country. How'd you get how'd you get the gig again? Would you just, it was, just apply it was, somewhere? It was through, like a lot of the jobs I get, it was through a friend. It okay. was through one of my friends who worked at uh, Cambridge Historical oh, okay, Tours. okay, I see. Wow. And he started Cambridge Historical Tours, but he also works with Just Murder Mysteries. Wow. And so we've continued to do shows together. So between that and the singing telegrams and the other, the other projects you do that you you, you must have made a lot of connections, people that want, you know, that hire you out for a lot of a lot of things. And you obviously, you must be on a callback list for a lot of stuff, too. Are you on the Boston Casting callback list? Yep, okay. I'm on all those different, um, oh. all those different audition sites, Boston Casting, um, CP Casting. There you go. Have they gotten, have they gotten you at work? It's, yes. Um, okay. It's great because uh, there's so many movies shooting yep. right now They're in right around here. the Boston area. They sure are. And so you don't I have to be the small fish in the big pond either. No, I can be the big fish but, and and you can write your own medium stuff. Medium-sized pond. Can, you, I mean, you basically call the shots, which is terrific. It's exactly yeah. so. I I want to write. Um, you know, I've been thinking about something because I live in Revere, and right. so Revere. so much Revere. There you go. Exactly. I whenever I tell people I live in Revere, I try to do the accent uh, Revere, and then I say we we drink a lot of Paps Blue Ribbon in Revere. Oh, there um, you go. <laughs> okay, well, do a beer commercial then. Yeah. Now, I mean, let's let's break down before we. What have you have you done commercials? Have you done have you done a lot? Have you ever done an opera? You could. You're not the fat lady, but have you ever sung <laughs> in an opera? Uh oh my gosh, so I. I'm sure my dad would love if I were to sing in an opera. I've never done You'd opera. You have to wear a fat suit, but, but it, yeah. No, okay, no, I'm giving, I try to give people guest advice that might behoove them later. What about, okay, have you ever been, have you been in commercials, music videos, or any of that, you know, those things? So, when I lived out in L.A., yep. I was in this fantastic music video by an um, artist or performer named Alicia. Okay, and pardon me, just let the phone start off. All right, go ahead, keep talking. Uh, Alicia, um, I think she's, um, a, I want to say maybe a Canadian artist, but The Life of the Party was the like name Alicia of the song. Keys, not Alicia Keys. No, not, okay. not Alicia Keys. Um, it's Alicia, A-L-E-E-S-I-A, -E -E -S and um, it was fantastic because they had rented out one of those homes in Los Angeles okay. that I think they just primarily use for film shoots. Okay, and cool. They wanted everybody at the end of this to jump in the pool at the end, the but it was one on of those with, with, their, with their clothes on. Okay. And it was a frigid night. Oh, boy. People think that Southern California oh, can't get cold. I know. I've been cold. out there. That, I, that myth was quickly dispelled in 1997 when I went out to visit my brother. And it was I almost froze at Anaheim Stadium going to a Red Sox game. Yes, uh, the same thing happened to me. I had gone to Disneyland right. and I was just wearing a sleeveless um, shirt. It was April. I mean, you know, you think if you've never been out there, you think, oh, it's going to be cold or warm. And there it is, you're cold. And next thing you know, you're doing this. Yeah, yes. But, well, okay, but that's cool. So you did that and you, were, you jumped in the pool in a music video. Yeah, it was um, it was Life of the Party. And then I've done, um, I think that it's appearing in New Hampshire maybe now, but it's a public service um, announcement. And it's by, um, I think it was sponsored by the Granite State Alliance. Okay. And it's um, part of a um, campaign called Know and Tell. Okay. And so I play this uh, quick part in that as the bride. Wow. And it was great. It was shot at this cute little chapel called um, Chapel by the Sea in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which was so beautiful. Right on, it's a beautiful spot on the sea, exactly. You make a beautiful bride, I'm sure. Oh, thank you. Well, guess what? We're down to the final five minutes of the show. We oh, my gosh. We talked a lot about good things that you've done. So what I want you to do in the remaining time, if you could, is to give give a few shouts out to people because a lot of people are going to see this. Yeah, tell okay. me likes when you plugged your appearance. So go ahead. Okay, so them. Uh, I'd like to give a shout people out. People that you've worked with a lot of and then family, family, friends, whatever. 
I'd like to give a shout out to Adam Griswold of Smoking Bottle Entertainment because he gave me some of my first uh, roles when I came back here uh, from LA back to Boston. Um, to Joey Kumajan of Boston Party Adventures because um, uh, we are the entertainers. Um, then, you know, thank you for all of the singing telegram work you get for me in the parties. Uh, thank you, mom and dad. Um, I couldn't have, you know, done this without you. And uh, thank you to uh, Jeff. Um, and thank Ooh, you to Jeff. Jeff, uh, Did Jeff follow the station manager. <laughs> well, we talk with Jeff. He knows um, who he is. All right. Good. Actually, I I always say this. I've never met a Jeff that I don't like. A lot of my favorite actors okay. have the oh, first okay. name well, Jeff. Jeff, um, Jeff, Jeff Daniels, but um, okay, gotcha. Right. My uh, my boyfriend Jeff. Um, oh, your Jeff boyfriend Mioli. Jeff. Yeah, now you okay. Okay, um, that's why I wanted to make sure. Cool. And uh, he's um completely different industry. He's uh, not in the acting industry at all. Um, okay, well, he's we'll software show, engineer. We'll, we'll talk about what he's in next time. <laughs> time um, and uh, thank you, Harrison, for having me on the show. I hope you had a good time. As I had a fantastic time. Okay. So I really just, enjoyed just it. Just real quick, what does your future look like? You got more, pro you're going back to LA, you're going to do more acting around here, but don't you? Uh, so quick summation. And something we'll something I'm really excited about is yep. I'm working with Erickson Artists okay. now. Um, Glenn Erickson okay. has... Uh, offered to be my manager, and so something that's in the works is a feature film called The Revenge of the Clancy Brothers. Oh, cool. And um, I actually haven't seen either of the movies that he said it's a cross between, but he says it's like a cross between Doctor Strange Love and fail safe. Yeah, that sounds like an apocalyptic fun. <laughs> yeah. Apocalypse movies are actually some of my favorite movies. I, I or too. Dystopian I novels. For real, and it'll be good to go. And not go. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I hope so too. So um, he's actually just mailed out the script to me today. So cool. well, that's, that's something that I hope you'll I see say me. Everything in happens for a reason. I'm so glad we got you in there just in time to, dis to, to disclose that. And on that note, are you ready to jig you with it? Yes, I am. All right, folks, thanks for watching Topic Time. More great episodes on the horizon. Take care. See you next time. Here we go.